Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Lauren Bacall. These are the mid-century super starlets you're probably already familiar with. But what if we told you there's an old-time Hollywood actress who was just as beautiful as Marilyn with an equally lurid story? You may not have heard of Barbara Payton before. Her career was short-lived. She only starred in movies from 1950 to 55. But she was once described by the Hollywood press as the most beautiful woman in pictures. Barbara Payton understood her place in the world, and she took pride in it. Barbara gave Hollywood her all, but time was not so kind. Her career ended with drug abuse, prostitution, and a stint in Mexico as a madam. Her short life ended in 1967, when she was found by a dumpster dying of liver failure. Barbara's meteoric rise and fall is tragic, fascinating, and amazingly human. In this video, we'll tell you the whole uncensored story of Barbara Payton's tragic life. Early Life Barbara Payton came from humble beginnings. She was born in 1927 as Barbara Redfield to working-class parents who immigrated from Norway. In her autobiography, I Am Not Ashamed, Barbara describes her childhood as tumultuous. She was an only child growing up in Odessa, Texas, and wanted nothing more than to get out. Her parents were controlling, limiting Barbara's interactions and behavior as much as they could, something Barbara resented even as an adult. Barbara became aware of her sexuality pretty early on. She says she was 12 or 13 when she realized the power of her femininity. Her femininity and sexuality were an asset, not a hindrance, and she could use them to get what she wanted. Her teenage years were impulsive and dramatic. At 15, she began a sexual relationship with a friend's father. At 16, she had a whirlwind romance and elopement with classmate William Hogue. They married impulsively in 1943 then swiftly annulled the marriage when Barbara's parents found out. A few months later, Barbara dropped out of 11th grade and set her sights on Hollywood. Through all this, Barbara knew one thing. She wanted to be in the movies, no matter what it took. What it ended up taking was another marriage, this time to an Air Force officer, John Payton. This time, her parents actively supported the marriage, even though Barbara was only 17. John and Barbara Payton married in 1944 and promptly moved to L.A. at Barbara's insistence. Once there, she began a career in modeling, quickly landing gigs for high fashion magazines and runways. She gave birth to their son, John Lee Payton, in 1947, and continued working as a model and small-time actress. However, balancing motherhood, a career, and a marriage proved to be too much for Barbara at the time. She and John divorced in 1948, the first of many failed marriages for Miss Payton. She kept the last name, however, and decided to try once and for all to become a big movie star. Hey, if you're enjoying this so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. And stick around to hear a lot more about Barbara Payton. Hollywood Knights Hollywood men were quickly enchanted with Barbara's beauty and affable demeanor. She cursed freely, drank wildly, and was impervious to judgment. She was a confident, freewheeling single woman who would do anything for a role, and late 40s Hollywood was truly not ready for her. Barbara figured out early that the only way to really succeed as a beautiful woman in Hollywood in those days was to weaponize her own sexuality. In her early acting days, she slummed it on casting couches, exchanged sexual favors, and even blackmailed producers to get what she wanted. Barbara even had an affair with an unnamed female co-star for a few months. Whether this was strategic or out of passion is unclear. But to Peyton, life was for living, and her version of living included a lot of sex. In the late 40s, Barbara had developed an impressive modeling portfolio. She had established herself, too, as a great socialite on the Sunset Strip. These connections are what earned her a role opposite James Cagney in 1950's Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. This was her first big role, and it earned her instant fame. Audiences were spellbound by her wide eyes and golden hair. Hollywood men wanted to get a piece of her as soon as they could. By 1950, Barbara was earning over $10,000 a week modeling, acting, and being a woman about town. She even earned the nickname Queen of Clubs. In 1950, A-list actor Franchot Tone became infatuated with Barbara. They became official quickly, capitalizing on their whirlwind romance for the tabloids. But this marriage quickly exploded a year later, when Barbara fell in love with B-movie underdog Tom Neal. Neil and Barbara began an affair and weren't great at hiding it because Francho Tone found out. In September 51, the two men got into a brawl in which Neil damaged Tone's face, almost irreparably, and gave him a concussion. The tabloids had a field day, 
and Barbara certainly fanned the flame. This fame and name recognition served her career well. After 1951, every director wanted Barbara in their movies. Her vivaciousness and enthusiasm was a double-edged sword, though. She was a heavy drinker and drug user. And as she continued to get roles, her partying and general behavior led to tensions on set. Actor Gregory Peck requested she be banned from the set of Only the Valiant. Frank Sinatra refused to allow his then-wife Ava Gardner to hang around Barbara after catching them blackout drunk and half-naked together. Barbara made friends everywhere she went, but she also made enemies. Lovers, Drugs, and Tricks The drama with Francho, Tone, and Tom Neal was not over in 1951. She married Tone soon after he was released from the hospital, but she never cut off her affair with Tom Neal. Quote, I was torn between what was good for me and what I wanted. She wrote about this time in her life. A year later, she divorced Tone and married Neal. But that marriage was short-lived as well, lasting only a weekend. By 1953, both men decided they were done with Barbara and her drama. Neal and Tone both cut her off for good. Barbara responded in typical fashion, partying. But now the gossip columnists, no longer enchanted by her beauty, turned nasty. The paparazzi would retell her wild nights with gusto, passing judgment on her sexual proclivity and party girl ways. As her drama aired to the world, Hollywood lost its fascination. Barbara's last official Hollywood film, Murder Is My Beat, was released in 1955. After that, she had difficulty finding gigs due to her reputation as an alcoholic and drama monger. She tried to turn to the strategy that had served her so well, sleeping around. She would call up powerful producers and directors she had connections with and proposition them, offering sexual favors in exchange for a job. But this time, producers refused. When they did, they would sit down and be honest with her. They weren't going to cast her, but they'd pay her for favors. One producer offered her $300 for a session. Barbara was desperate. She was broke, still had a son to take care of, and hadn't gotten a gig in years. She turned to prostitution out of desperation, hoping that selling her sex would help pull her out of the hole. For the latter half of the 50s, Barbara worked as a high-end escort and prostitute in Chicago. She got involved with powerful men who could not resist her allure, businessmen, gangsters, and producers alike, all of whom wanted a piece of Barbara's movie star beauty. But in the 60s, her life went even further downhill. The years of drinking and partying were wreaking havoc on her figure, and the powerful men who had been funding her lifestyle began to lose interest. She left Chicago, spending the next few years bouncing around California and Mexico, writing poetry and working with smaller artists between sleeping with clients. She continued drinking and partying, but her body just couldn't keep up. In 1967, a passerby found Barbara Payton collapsed in an alley. She was immediately taken to the hospital, where they diagnosed her with acute liver failure. Barbara was delirious, possibly still drunk or high, and she passed away the next day. Barbara's life was a roller coaster, but she maintained an optimistic and kind outlook through it all, from humble beginnings in Odessa, Texas. Some may say Barbara weaponized her sexuality. Others say Hollywood failed her. But one thing is true, Barbara's legacy is as fascinating as it is outrageous. What do you think? Was Barbara Payton a seductress, or was she another victim of mid-century Hollywood misogyny? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.